Hey, it's me. I've got the rest of season two of Mashal all chewed up and ready to regurgitate here. Check out part one if you haven't seen it yet, or even the playlist of all my Mashal videos if you want to watch everything chronologically. Anyway, Mash was in the middle of a fight with this guy, Margaret, who is currently retaliating by launching bolts of grape juice. While Mash runs around the arena, they converge upon an impasse. Marge insists Mash fight without the shackles of his pocket cream puff. He complies for the sake of chivalry, and they get back to business. Margarita's musical fists blow out Mash's eardrums a few times. Then he goes for the big move, Sounds Orchestra, a conjuring of several gramophones, which produce a vicious explosion of sound. Everyone monologues briefly in response, but Mash has become a mole person to evade the danger. Finn is shook. Margaret gets directly kicked in the face, then after being pinned down, receives Mash's iconic barrage of fists. Margot is unaffected and dramatically metamorphoses into a radiant pink demon. Wait, never mind. He regresses into a child. Mash is shook. Meanwhile, Ryo is informed of Innocent Zero's movements towards the academy. Bad news bears, Margreth's magical abilities are increased tenfold from his transformation, and a simple kiss of a breeze brings Mash to his knees. Macaroni has become sound itself. Caldo also explains this. While Mash is tossed around, Moret is suddenly evaded. Caldo deduces that Mash felt the sound before it reached him with his otherworld reflexes. Margaret goes for a counter, but finds his fingers covered in stuff and unable to activate his speed. Lance shares an opinion. Margarine unleashes his second death ability, Death Gong, a large purple bell which instantly kills anything within a two kilometer radius after a minute's time. He challenges Mash to break his wand before that minute is up or suffer a fatal defeat. Lance is worried. The impromptu game of tag commences and comes down to the last few seconds. In a fit of desperation, Mash pulls up the ground to limit Margaret's range of motion, then yoinks that boy out of the air, smashing his wand and winning the match. The homies are elated. Gandalf and Caldo are pleased. Innocent Zero freezes the world in place, claws a hole through space-time, then emerges to say hello. Mash is fondled by the hooded freak and called his son. I am shook. Mr. Zero wants to absorb Mash to become complete. Gross. Dumbledore has objections though. With time frozen, Gandalf places his life on the line to save his students. Edward Scissorhands feels his intense bloodlust. Innocent Zero is unaffected and unveils his delusions of becoming the ultimate being. Gandalf is disappointed. They both get juiced up before the fight by growing a few more tattoos and summoning their cool sticks. Some goblins emerge from the ground nearby while Dumbledonk dispels the time freeze on several key people. The freeze wizards jump into action to deal with the minions, each doing their own magics to repel the onslaught of goons. Otter gets involved too. Despite being individually powerful, the summoned asparagus demons fall to Dumbledore's army. Meanwhile, the penultimate battle takes place in the sky for safety reasons. Selwar makes a spiky ball to drop on the arena, while Grimp the Dominator makes his presence known. Margaret notices that Mash remains unmolested by the green freaks, an indicator of a strategic ploy to capture him. He also reveals his womanly heart to clear up any socio-cultural misunderstandings. Dot pleads Mash to infiltrate Cellular's spiky dandelion tower. So he does. Subwar is brought to his faded battle and parades a vocalization of his power. Mash doesn't remember who he is though. Selwar is shook. Grongor the debilitator and his lizard homies are given much needed support by a baby who transforms Dot into one of his own kind. His magic level is reduced as a result and he flees in terror. Lance is brought into the baby duel, but finds it difficult to manage protecting the midget, fighting the meatbags, and dodging the infant magic. The arena has become a daycare under the dominating power of Sitter Baby. Lance catches his foe off guard by tapping him with a small square of gravioli. I guess the evil of Sitter Baby was no match for even an infantile Lance gown. They return to size. Rhinoceros and Afro Ginger discuss modern civilization's deep lore. A wizard with the power of God named Adam found founded the Divine Visionaries with his dark magic. Gandalf, Zorro, and some other guy were his prized students. Ryo fears for the outcome.
outcome of the legendary wizard's duel. Innocent Zero is smooth. Gandalf is shook. Zero reveals his objectives for his invasion, harvest Mash, and defeat Dumbledore. Their battle begins with a spooky clock and some gross holes, which bring forth a coffin. Mash's battle also begins, but is mostly just Cell War psychotically monologuing and throwing his nuggets. Mash has grown stronger since they last met, however, and runs atop Siwo's projectiles to close the distance between them with his muscle magic. Cell is intimidated. God explains some additional lore about Adam, the mega wizard. He essentially created every system in modern use, except for the rampant discrimination against the magicless. That was due to the failure of his students, with whom he entrusted with the concept of noblesse oblige. Zero appears to have resurrected Adam from death somehow. Gandalf is shook. This guy, Necros Mance, gets to puppeting. Zebo reveals that his master's psyche isn't the same, but his body and power is equivalent to that of his prime. Dumbledore has a flashback to when Adam gave him a nurturing lecture on noblesse oblige, repels the attack from the husk of his former master, and rolls for intimidation. Necros blasts a hole in nearby mountain in response, then explains that Adam's dark magic cannot be repelled by any other counter spell, even though Galandalal just did that a moment ago. He giggles in delight. Dumbledore is a beast disguised as an aging old man though, and spatially teleports Necrobob's left side off. He retaliates but doesn't seem to know how to effectively use Adam's juice. Angered by his failures, he produces a big meatball of dark energy, which Dumbledore skillfully dispatches with an impressive rectangle encasing Orb and Spellcaster alike. The troops' ground battle continues. Meanwhile, at the Spike Disco, Selwar introduces the concept of body alteration to MASH, forbidden magic, where a blood relative's heart is used as a catalyst for a longer lifespan, which is why Innocent Zero wants MASH. Mash appears unaffected by the revelation that his existence was manufactured specifically to become like that of a protein in a muscle, but decides to take a nap in response to this news. Upon waking, he inquires about Cell War's relation to Zero, which is just that of a corpse revived with Zero's blood. He's totally jealous of Mash, gets a nuclear sandwich, and is challenged to a fight. Cell War does whatever this is, his wand's true form, probably. It rustles the other characters with its glow, and is unleashed upon Mash. Cello explains that his big move consists of four heat-seeking spinning Beyblades, while Mash does some acrobatics to avoid them. Selwar activates his colossal sea urchin to threaten the lives of the, all the students residing within the arena. Mash up and skedaddles, shaking the discs and doing a lap around the school. The chakrams follow through, slicing Mash and Twain and leaving Selwar unaffected. Mash suddenly produces a matryoshka of cream puffs, which he proceeds to stuff in Cell's hole while singing the incantation, Cream Puff Party. Cell War is strangled to death. Ignore all that other stuff, that was just Selly's hallucination from being oxygen deprived. Mash wins. Ryo and his ginger boy fly right into Innocent Zero's time stop field. Even the birds are a victim. Ryo rendezvous with his fellows down in the arena, who seem to have handled the situation just fine. They discuss Gandalf's whereabouts, and Mash scurries off to find him. Otter, as usual, doubts Mash will be any use, and goes to interrogate Cell War, who lay is defeated. He turns into an egg and is whisked away by a mysterious force. Marge figures there is another evil fella roaming the premises, so out of concern for the frozen students, the visionaries remain in the arena. Ryo fears for Dumbledore again and wishes Mash the best. Meanwhile, the mega wizards continue their incomprehensible metaphysical duel. There's a lot of teleporting around. Half of Gandalf becomes old due to some time magic, so he cuts out a massive chunk of space to prevent Zebra from manipulating time. Zero was the fastest racist and hits Dumbledore with something fierce. He monologues in victory, but takes too long, giving the big door the opportunity to have a flashback to times when he was a degenerate otaku with low grades and no friends. Adam Sensei pestered him enough with strange animal trivia that he was eventually suckered into going to school. Gandalf rises from his knees with the inspiration to pursue Adam's ideals further. He decides to go all out just this once. With the epitome of magic, space is thirds Uranus inclination a penroseish mech imbued with the power of the gods innocent zero's magic is utterly no. negated and Dumbledore goes for the kill move Uranus deletus
I guess that's off the table now, actually. Innocent Zero goes for his own kill move. The mech persists, though, despite his caster being dealt significant damage. Gandalf explains that his spell will continue to cast even after his demise, stating plainly that he will burn himself up in a blaze of magic to defeat Innocent Zero. He then fondly reflects on the determination of his precious students in their individual lives, philosophies, motivations, etc. Dumbledore's compassion for the weak is congealed into the ultimate expression of noblesse oblige and the pinnacle of magic, the four seasons of omnipotence. All the characters currently observing are shook. Well, turns out that spatial distortion doesn't happen if you rewind time before it was even cast. Things aren't looking too great for the old headmaster. He falls into despair as he comes to terms with his futile efforts. There is that boy, right on time, ready to slap some silly out of zero. Card, Ho, and Rhydon discuss the spatial magic briefly, then Ryo goes to help. Mash is a kind-hearted lad who maintains respect for the elderly, so he rushes to the defense of his gallant headmaster. They both get encased in a malevolent egg, which steals their whizbiz. Mash is unaffected, but Gandalf's tricks have been reproduced. This mountain is an unfortunate victim of this outcome. Zero is confident. Mash goes berserk, but it doesn't matter. Zero gets a nasty migraine all of a sudden, indicating that his magical power is exceeding his physical capacity. Dumbledore figures that's why the notorious IZ is after Mash, to obtain the physical capacity he's currently lacking. Zero flips out on his son with some of that classic aristocratic denial Pronunciation and tries to smite the weakened Gandalf. Mash is fast though, and remains determined to beat up the bad guy, especially because the world will accept him after this. Zero shatters a rift in space-time, slurps up all the depleted demons from down below, makes Polyphemus his weird cousin, insults Mash again, then pieces out into the cosmic soup. Gandalf succumbs to his injuries just as Ryo arrives, while Mash scampers to the aid of the students, who are all terribly confused. They freak out over the big guy Zero summoned while he throws some rocks without a care in this world. Lance finds inspiration from his sister and stops the boulders from hurtling towards the crowd. Marge compels everyone to flee as the multi-headed gimp beast is protected from Dot's explosions with an anti-magic barrier. Caldo explains how the barrier makes the incredible bulk invincible, so Otter is on his way to whack the caster. The students try to escape. There is no escape. Lance and Margaret are pumped. Big guy peeps on the plebs and prepares a punch. Mash gets to him first though, then traps him with his baby restraints. They have a tug of war together, while the crowd doubts Mash's capacity as a wizard. This guy has a brain blast and overcomes the generations of discrimination against the magicalist by starting a cheer which echoes throughout the arena. Finn monologues in awe while Mash struggles with the gigantic asparagus, and there he goes, off into the distance. The lemon attempts seduction, but loses to a cream puff. Gandalf awakens from his coma and immediately has thoughts of his supple young student. God states that the common people have been fed a story stating that the divine visionaries fought Innocent Zero off and continues by hard cutting to Mash at the beach, chilling out with his homies. Mash is eaten by a watermelon temporarily. They splash around. Dumbledore is big chilling as well. He rambles that Mash will never know peace until Zero is defeated and continues to explain how Innocent Zero, along with his five brothers, still remain the most powerful magic users in the world. Gandalf fears for their chances of victory, but places his absolute trust in Mash's autistic strength. Mash joins in with some WWE logic to seal the deal. The Lemon and Finn hear the sounds of Mash's smooth brain doing gymnastics in his vacuous dome. Dumble Bumble believes in those straightforward words, so does his faithful party. Mash is unprepared for his final exams, however. Later, in a study group, he has an existential crisis, and again, and thrice over, and here too. His professors are brutal. He escapes out a nearby window from fear. Lance gives up, while Finn gives chase. He finds Mash buried in the earth, preparing to return to the soil. Finn inspires him with words of encouragement, and they kiss. Just kidding. Mash just crawls out of his hole and stares at the sun. He apologizes, and then they get back to studying via montage. The next exam is conquered, more or less. Suddenly, Bamboo Tom emerges with urgent news. The common folk are now aware the academy has a magicless person amongst their ranks, and the angered populace gather outside in protest. The Lemon attempts to quell the riot by insisting that she's Mash's wife. She fails, and Dot takes over for her by posing as Mash's agent. He threatens to kill everyone. They are 
accused of heresy against God, and Lemon takes a rock to the face. She gets more heretical in response by cementing her defense with a flashback of Mash being a cool guy. This guy, uh, and then provokes the crowd. Mash catches all the rocks cast at the wicked sinner and gets a cylinder dropped on him. He doesn't care though, and then returns it to the cinder. Gandalf eccentrically giggles onto the scene to clarify things to the crowd. He gives Mash a pat, inspires him to continue with his dauntless warpath, and helps him dramatically stare out into the distance. God wraps things up by reflecting on the past while displaying some of the characters involved in this season. And that's the end of Mashal. Magic and Muscles, Season 2. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed whatever this is, like and subscribe for more of it. I also have a Patreon for those who want to feel joy. Uh, I probably forgot something. Bye.